Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Andrew Yang, and we're going to talk about Professor Alan Lichtman's keys at a redux level, all right? So we talked about Professor Alan Lichtman's keys yesterday, uh, but I think there's a lot of lessons here for uh, for Andrew Yang to to learn from and to leverage as he moves forward with his campaign. Um, I really think there's a lot of wisdom within what Professor Alan Lichtman is presenting with his keys. So we talked yesterday about uh, Professor Alan Lichtman. I'll, I'll give a real quick uh, summary of who he is and what he does. Professor Alan Lichtman is... He is a U.S. presidential predictor. He's a professor at American University. He has, uh, depending on who you ask, he has either predicted seven out of eight of the last presidential presidential elections correctly or nine out of nine. It depends on how you count, right? He's very, very accurate. He's the very best in the world at accurately predicting uh, U.S. presidential uh, U.S. presidential elections in public, showing his work, showing his model over decades. Nobody even comes close, right? So he has 13 keys, and we talked about those 13 keys yesterday. And what I want to do today is I want to kind of um, narrow in and pick out what Andrew Yang should be focusing on, the, the purest wisdom from Alan Lichtman's keys, from the Lichtman keys. And I think the Lichtman keys... They talk about power, right? So when you're talking about politics, you're talking about power. How is power used? Who is power given to? How is power preserved? How is power transitioned? Um, all of these type of things. How is it shaped, right? Um, how is it? How is it leveraged? All you know, politics is about power, right? And so basically, when you when you talk about politics specifically, I think Alan Lichtman's keys. Lichtman's keys point to four, four, four axes of power, okay? Uh, especially when it comes to the presidency, okay? When the U.S. presidency, it points to f only four axes of power, okay? And those are incumbency, military, stability, and challenge, right? Now, also, to be clear, this is power for anyone who is president or is attempting to become pre president, right? And you could see that three of those are almost exclusively to the person who is in power as the president, right? And that only the last one, challenge, is the only axis of power that a challenger has, right? And so you could see right out of the gate from those four axes of power, incumbency, military, stability, and challenge, we're going to talk about each one of these in a little more detail, that really... Um, it, it is incredibly difficult to unseat an incumbent president, right? So when you have a president who's had four years in office, in some ways it barely even matters what they did, right? Uh, the incumbency comes with so much power, it's incredibly difficult to unseat an incumbent president, right? So one of the things we're seeing right now is that what Andrew Yang is is attempting is incredibly difficult. We've, we've had a sense of that all along, right? But as we get closer, you know, we, we get even more understanding how set in cement uh, Donald Trump really is. And and the reason why we need to look at that is like, we got to say, hey, do we need more than one jackhammer here, right? If we're going to chip this guy out and pull him out of this position, what actually is needed? What are the tools that need, need that are needed in order to pull Donald Trump out of this position, right? So let's talk about the first one, incumbency. It's so incredibly powerful, right? So the first axis of power that I think uh, Lichtman's keys point to is incumbency. Incumbency has always been powerful in, in the U.S. presidency, but one of the things I think we need to acknowledge right now is the absolute massive power of the media. So the media has made incumbency even more powerful. And the reason why is name recognition has always been val uh, valuable and has always been a major, major advantage within politics. But now with the ubiquitous camera, it's even more so, right? You see this with Tom Steyer. Tom Steyer is a completely forgettable candidate. He's done virtually nothing in his life except, except stack up dollar bills, uh, Eight, and mostly, and I think, in my opinion, the most key things to remember he, he did he, he did that with was supporting coal companies and for-profit prisons, right? Like, you know, so this is not, you know, Tom Steyer is not somebody anyone should be considering for president. And yet 
you know, just by name recognition, by running ads and paying millions of dollars to run ads, he's got enough name recognition to be considered a real candidate and to take a position on the debate stage. That's incredible. Um, so name recognition is really important. And incumbency comes with massive name recognition, right? So the importance of this is there's a few lessons from Lichtman's keys that Yang has to be hyper-focused on. And I think he should really start talking about some of this. One of, one of the things that I think Yang has, he's got to start pulling out the stops and really stop being a nice guy on some of the things that he's being a nice guy on. Somebody has got to really politi- pick up the political dagger and take it to, um, uh, and take it to Biden politically, uh, about what happened in 2016, right? Uh, and the reality is, um, so right now Joe Biden's like, Hey, I'm here to save you from Donald Trump. And nobody's saying, Hey, Joe, uh, this was handed to you in 2016. People begged you to take it and you refused it. You're like, Oh, I have a, you know, I have a family issue I need to take care of. Right. Which frankly, in any other time in country's history would have been fine. But when you're sitting on the other side of October 2019, where Bernie Sanders had a heart attack and said, I just had a heart attack and I'm going to ride hard in this election, you know, for this primary and a heart attack will not stop me from running for the U.S. presidency. It shows everybody the law pain rule is in effect. You do not break the law. You do not hurt people. Right. Beyond that, there are absolutely no limits. And if you're being handed the presidency in 2016 and you're like, oh, I got a family issue. Right. You, you don't get to check out like that. You don't, right? You just can't, right? Like, it used to be you could, right? But Bernie's like, I'm willing to die for this. What do you, you know? So it just really points to Biden saying, hey, you know, you're, we're, we're in this mess because of you. You certainly can't be, you know, act like you're, you're, like you're a savior riding in on a white horse. You drop, like, the ball you want us to give you now, you literally dropped on the ground in 2016. We're here because of you. You can't be the person who fixes the problem you literally caused, right? And the reason we know that is incumbency is so powerful that it looks like if he, if if Joe Biden had just jumped, run, run right in, he would have had every bit of the momentum of Obama, and he would have had four years of sharpness that I think he's missing right now, which frankly I think he would have needed, right? So like. And I, I really think Andrew Yang's got to come out and just start really politically eviscerating uh, Biden and saying, hey, stop pretending you're going to save us from a problem you created. Right. This is your mess. Like Obama was and, and the entire DNC and the entire Democrat base was handing you the ball. You're begging people to give you now. Right. So if you if you dropped it in 2016, why on earth should anybody hand it to you in 2020? Right. Like. And I, I'm all for that. Like, you know, this is like, this ain't cool. This is not cool, right? So I think he's really got to go there. The other thing that, that just needs to really, really dial in for people is that the vice presidency is so critical, right? It's not a small thing. You are not, <clears throat> because of the ubiquitous camera, we're no longer in a situation where you, where the VP is a minor concern. The V, you're really, th- when you pick a presidency, you're saying, I want this person for eight years, and I want that VP for another. You are choosing 16 years of the U.S. presidency. That's how powerful it is because of the ubiquitous camera. Name recognition now today is so incredibly powerful that that unless you do a Joe Biden and take the ball that you're given and go, oh, here it is. I can have the presidency. No, I don't want it. You're going to get it, right? Like it's almost impossible to to lose on an incumbency. It's really hard. The only way you lose on an incumbency is if you do a Joe Biden and you throw it on the ground, right? Like there's a great SNL skit, skit called I Threw It on the Ground. And the new and the new name of that skit should be the Joe Biden. I threw it on the ground, right? And again, we should all have the simp- all the sympathy in the world for him, except Bernie showed, no, we can no longer give him sympathy for that. It's weak sauce, Joe. Like Bernie's willing to die for a day in the office. We can't like give you the points. We can't. Right. It's, it's too much. Right. Like, and it's incredible. You, I like no one can sit by and listen to Biden ask us to give him the 20 ball in 2020 when he threw it on the ground in 2016. And Yang needs to come and, and be the first person to say, stop pretending, Joe, you, you're asking for something that you refuse to take in 2016. And if you think I'm wrong, go back and look at the and look at the record. You will find a lot of articles 
talking about people going, what the heck, why is Joe Biden screwing up the absolute freight train momentum we have from Obama, right? Joe Biden took the freight train momentum from Obama and burnt it, just burnt it. And now he's coming back and saying, I'm here. Uh, I'd like the presidency now. I'm ready. No, no, Joe. The, no, you didn't have the vision now, and you certainly don't have a vision. You didn't have the vision then, and you certainly have less vision now, right? Like, you couldn't see what was coming, clearly. And this nation needs somebody with vision, and that's Andrew Yang. Unbelievable. It, it is incredible. And the other thing is the, the power of the VP is this, like, you cannot underrate that. All right, the military, the, the military axis, right? The axis of power, military, incredibly important. But less of a mover than most people think. I think a lot of people are like, oh, the military, how the military use, is used is really, really important in, in, in today's society. I don't think so. I really don't think so. And the reason why is basically uh, this key is, um, is, this is these, these, these keys are welded right now, right? And I think people are like, oh, there's a military failure. There's a military success, right? But that's only, you only see military failures and military successes when you buy on to the absolutely ridiculous uh, narrow band that the me that traditional media is now trying to sell people, which is, are we in danger, right? Well, I'll tell you right now, you know, I live in Pennsylvania. I care about the military. And, I, and, and right now I'm like, okay, is there a problem? Do we have a problem? Is there an issue in the world, right? Militarily for America? And so I think about it and I'm like, okay, okay is there a nation that's going to put uh, an army of soldiers on the ground, extended for days, weeks, months, or years in the U.S.? Is there a nation that's going to send uh, fighter jets over, fuel them at uh, bases, and then send wave after wave of you know, airstrikes against the U.S.? Is there a nation that's going to take their army and put them on troop transports? Is there a nation that has aircraft carriers? Is there a nation that's going to put tanks on the ground? Is are we going are we going to war? And I'm like, no, I'm not not worried in the least. Like, no, we're not going to war. Right? Like, there's no war coming to America, right? Like, no, there is, certainly isn't. Is there a situation where there might be people in the world who have isolated uh, incidents of kinetic action? That might happen. Sure. I'm a little worried about that. Yeah, that's we've seen that in America before. We've dealt with it before. It's very it's a very terrible thing when it happens, but it's not war. Right? Like you know, like I am very concerned about my family being safe from war. We are very safe from war. Like you know, like I don't really see a nation ready to roll troops up on America. It hasn't happened in hundreds of years. Am I like ridiculous? It, we are these these keys are welded in place, right? There might become a nation where, you know, they can actually, you know, be a threat to America. I don't see a nation like that right now. Not a single one on the planet. Not one. Right? So I so I think the military ones, you know, Americans want their families to be safe. American families are safe right now. Right? Now, of course, there is another issue, right? There were times in our past where we had a where, where we had a draft. Right. And you had people who weren't signing up for this in major problem, having major issues. Right. That would be a major issue. We, we don't have a draft right now. Right. So like that's also another large part. Right. That, that would the military key would be more likely to turn right to a to a negative for for any of these candidates or the president if those keys weren't welded into a positive position. But right now, I think it's decades before there's a nation on the planet who has the ability to go to war with America. Like, n there's not one. Like, I I think the closest would be China. They can't move their army. Like, it's it's not even, not, it's not even close. Like, there's not even close, right? So from that perspective, I think the, the military keys are, they're welded in place, all right? All right, stability. This is huge, right? Stability. There's a lot of parts in this one, right? Uh, economy, uh, is the economy stable? Phew, stable as a rock right now. Uh, third party. Is there a third party? This is a fascinating one. Just remember the Tea Party. This happens every now and then. There's zero third parties today. None. Libertarians, like, yeah, like, they're a, you know, they're a party. They're a, 
uh, a single, they're five minutes of conversation at a dinner party, right? They're, they're not a real third party, right? Uh, policy, you know, are there major policy changes? There's so much talk and there's so little policy change actually happening. The only thing that's happening right now is deregula- deregula- deregulation. Social unrest, there's a lot of social unrest right now. And then scandal, like so on stability, right? Social unrest, that absolutely can, you know, make a specifically domestic stability, right? Is our nation stable, right? And social unrest can, can cause a lot of un- instability and people don't like instability. That's an axis of power. If the nation isn't stable, whoever's in power is going to lose power, right? Is going to lose points. And the challenger is going to be able to, to push harder, right? And, and have a better chance of winning. Andrew Yang, right? There is social unrest right now. This is probably the wedge point where Andrew Yang can gain the most points and move the forward the most. The last one is scandal. And one of the things I think is, is interesting is so shocking about, uh, about uh, Trump Trump is really an unprecedented president. There's never been anybody like him. And one of the things that he's changed is, I'm not sure, you know, I think this started, I think this, the Dems started this. The Dems started this. In, 19, in, the, in the mid-1990s, the, the Dem, the DNC, and the, and the Dem base, and the Dem voters said, hey, scandal doesn't matter for presidents. That's exactly what they said for Bill Clinton, right? And they were like, we need to take scandal off the board. This can no longer affect domestic stability. And, uh, you know, so the Dems were like, Bill Clinton, we want to remove scandal from, from harming presidents. And the Dems were like, we want to try this. Let's see where it works. And uh, Trump just picked up the ball and he was like, scandal doesn't count anymore. Awesome. I'm going to show you how it works. <laughs> and he just he just adds scandals to his plate like pancakes, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And the impeachment didn't matter. Nothing matters. Like, like scandal, is com- it's a complete non-starter now. Scandal means virtually nothing in today's politics. That is incredible. That, that scandal has been t- taken off the board for stability. Andrew Yang really needs to pay very close attention to this. And one of the things that really frustrates me is, Andrew Yang, he's had a couple bumps in the road, a few things, you know, here and there, right? He has minor scandals, right? Um, but the reality is he's fairly, you know, comparatively, of course, compared to Trump and also compared to Bill Clinton, he's had, he's virtually, uh, 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 he, he has had, he does not struggle, struggle with scandal at the level of some other candidates, right? And because of that, you would think he could gain ground here, but he can't because scandal's taken off the board. It's really frustrating for Andrew Yang, and I, I and I, I feel bad for him on this one. The last one. Let's talk about the the axis of power for challenge. There's only two. Uh, there's incumbency and there's charisma. So incumbency is if you were a VP or if you were a VP, right? Joe Biden's got it. He was a VP, right? It's one of the reasons why he's pulling the way he is. He has huge name recognition, and he still retains some percentage of the goodwill of Obama. I still have some goodwill for him because of Obama. I voted for Obama twice. I'm thankful for what Joe Biden did during the uh, during the Obama years. I, I, that he nobody can ever take that away. I'm incredibly frustrated that he burned all the momentum of Obama's can, candidacy, considering what's happened since. Like, this, like, I truly believe this is all on Joe Biden. Like, the idea that he wants to save us now when he created the problem is shockingly foolish, right? Like, and I can't believe nobody's talking about this. Like, this is, like, he wants to save us from the problem he created. It's absurd. It is truly absurd, right? And it's one of the things that Lichtman's Keys points to. And I think Yang should just beat this drum all day long. He should make this a major song of his campaign, Right? And, um, and then the last one, so, uh, now of course, you know, Yang doesn't have incumbency, by the way, if you're a politician and you serve like, uh, like, like Bernie Sanders, that ain't incumbency. Absolutely. Nobody cares about political experience anymore for the presidency, nor should they, nor should they, right? It it does not mean a thing, a thing. The president's like, the president could get experienced, people and get political wonks and get the answers they need. I don't think political experience should be counted in any way. And the reason why is exactly what happened in 2016. Uh, you know, uh, Hillary Clinton was a dyed in the wool politician. She had all the political experience in the world and Donald Trump wrecked her, absolutely wrecked her, like showed that political experience counted for exactly zero, 
right? Like she, like politically, Donald Trump roundhouse kicked her and she never even saw it coming. What did all that experience amount to? Exactly zilch, right? So I think, so like incumbency from political experience, it no longer counts. The last one is charisma. This is huge, huge, right? Charisma is a really, really, really big deal. It's more powerful than ever. It's a major, major issue. And I think uh, charisma is, it, it is because of the ubiquitous camera, it's more powerful than ever. I think Yang absolutely has it. I think it's one of the, it's one of his secret weapons. And I think it's going to be one of the things that helps him continue to move forward. And I think he should leverage it like crazy. That to me is a redux of Alan Lichtman's keys. The powers of, the axes of power. Incumbency, military stability, and challenge. That's that's what's there. And I think Andrew Yang should definitely leverage down on these and use these to move forward in a wise manner. All that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing. And have a wonderful millennium.